Today is day 100 of the crisis in the Gulf of Mexico, and a whistleblower has come forth from the Environmental Protection Agency charging the EPA with helping BP to downplay the environmental impact of its supposed cleanup efforts. You will meet him in a moment. But if the cleanup has been compared to letting the criminal clean up the crime scene, we begin our fourth story tonight with news about the cops. The Washington Post reports that federal agents who call themselves the BP squad are investigating whether BP, Transocean, or Halliburton, even before the blowout, lied to regulators, obstructed justice, or faked the test results for their equipment, including the blowout preventer that, needless to say, failed to prevent a blowout. Specifically, sources told the Post investigators are asking whether inspectors at the Minerals Management Agency went easy on the rig and why. BP yesterday revealed that it is now the subject of an investigation by the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission, into something and no word yet on exactly whether that is related to the spill. And while Jane Lubchenco, director of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, says the oil is becoming harder to find, the Natural Resources Defense Council's annual report on beaches found no downturn in the number of beach closures or advisories since the spill was capped. The NRDC reports that the number of beach closures and advisories this year, 2200, is roughly 10 times more than last year. And it predicts that the impact will last for years. And in a cable news exclusive, that whistleblower we mentioned joins us now. EPA senior policy analyst Hugh Kaufman is a veteran and legend of the agency, having had a hand in Love Canal and the creation of the Superfund and helped expose the EPA cover up of air quality at Ground Zero. Mr. Kaufman, what should we know about the dispersants used in the Gulf that the EPA isn't telling us? Well, first of all, the dispersants mixed with the oil and the water is extremely toxic. Uh, Sweden has done studies on this. Israel has done studies on this. And the only real purpose of using so many dispersants with the oil was to cover up the volume of oil that was released from that well. So that and lying about how much is coming out was a mechanism to help BP save billions of dollars in fines. Should they have not used dispersants at all? That's correct. Uh, uh, if they did not use dispersants, uh, they would have been able to get most of that oil off of the surface and would not have endangered all of the fish uh, and, uh, and ecosystem underneath the water that now will be affected for decades on down the line. I was uh, listening to some of the, quote, experts who are being paid by BP at University universities who are saying that the oil has disappeared. It hasn't disappeared. It's throughout thousands of square miles in the Gulf mixed with the dispersants. And because the temperatures down there are so cold, they're going to be around for decades. Now, were you and others at the EPA making this case uh, within the system that, that uh, arguing that we shouldn't be using dispersants there? And what was the response? Well, the working level troops uh, in research, some of the toxicologists who have experience in education, were trying to get management uh, to pay attention to the data that EPA had and has had for, for decades, but to no avail. Uh, there was a political uh, decision made to let BP take the lead as opposed to the government being proactive as we used to be. Now, when you say a political decision, are you saying that that decision was made by EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson, a, a Barack Obama appointee, or was it made outside of the EPA? The decision was made outside of the EPA by political appointees, but I don't have the vision to see how high up that was made. Now, My vision is limited because I'm in the middle of the bureaucracy. And uh, what, what evidence is there that the dispersants uh, are, are doing the kind of damage that you're talking about? 
Well, uh, we've uh, seen anecdotal information of, uh, of uh, mammals in the water like dolphins uh, 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 bleeding from their orifices. Some of the workers who have done the spill cleanup are having the same problem. The dispersant and oil mixtures are, are supposed to atomize uh, materials like oil. Well, if that gets into your system, that atomizes your cells, and that's why there's hemorrhaging. So there's anecdotal information both down there in the Gulf, similar to the anecdotal information at the Exxon Valdez case uh, almost uh, 20 years ago. What is the best scientific approach from this point forward? Well, uh, right now we're very limited. We've got uh, hundreds of millions of uh, gallons of oil spread out mixed with two million gallons of dispersant. And so what we have to do is mon accurately monitor the air and water and be very careful with the seafood. Uh, but we've now poisoned uh, uh, thousands of, uh, of square miles of the Gulf and uh, we have to recognize that and take precautions uh, so that uh, we minimize the damage that we have done. Hugh Kaufman, Senior Policy Analyst for the EPA, thank you for your insights on this tonight. Thank you, sir.